Welcome back to part 2 of learning how to code for beginners. Today we are going to cover on how to create a custom item and create features for it. So, let's start off on how to give an item. Well, to make a custom item, we can use the API.giveItem feature. So, this is meant to give this an item, hence the name. So, let's show you the code block. So, I want to give myself an iron pickaxe. If I click it, I get one iron pickaxe. We can also change the amount of iron pickaxes we get by adding this argument here, which is like we add 2. So if we go to the code here, in the documentation, we can see that API don't give item, you choose the player who you want to give the item, the item name, the item amounts, and the attributes. Now the attributes is where we're going to give someone the custom weapon, but we'll touch on that later. First let's do basic giving. So not only that, so we can actually like give ourselves other things like we can give ourselves like dirt and we can put like 999 for example so when you use a code block you see this term my id here my id is actually the player id who's clicking the code block yeah so that's something new to me and if i'm right it only works for code blocks so it's a, just a really special feature for me so first we can choose who to give the icon so we can do it in my id and then we can choose the item name. Finally, you can choose the item amount, and then we can add attributes to it. So that's how we can give an item. Now let's move on to how we can give an item with a custom name and attribute. So as we see here, there's API dot give item my ID diamond sword custom display name fire sword custom attributes weapon ID one. Now it looks very confusing, and yes, but to make it simple. Take this as a folder. So, we have our item which is a diamond sword and our, the, we have our item that we want and the amount that we want to give is 1 Then, the name of the item is diamond sword and our attributes which will be an, a separate folder and inside that attributes folder, there's a second folder called custom display name where you can choose poison sword a custom description and it will be dust damage We can go on to custom attributes which is our own built-in attributes and there can be another separate folder of its own and our custom attributes is weapon ID. So essentially, what this code does is it sets a custom display name to fire sword. So it sets a custom display name here to fire sword. It sets the custom attributes weapon ID to one. That's the essentials of giving an item. Now we know how to give ourselves an item. Let's put it in practice. So let's give ourselves a iron pickaxe. And let's give ourselves one iron pickaxe and our custom display name will be a um, diamond pick. So if we do this, we have an item named diamond pick. Then we can also set a custom description and other stuff. But yeah, that's the fundamentals of giving an item. Alright, so let's give ourselves the poison sword item. So we're gonna use API.give item. So we're gonna choose my ID to give the item. We're gonna make it a diamond sword. Then we're gonna give one diamond sword with the custom display name of if you run it I get the poison sword that's crazy then we can also set like some weapon attributes so we can do go to custom attributes and then we can make weapon id and yeah we get this with weapon id and even though they look the same both poison sword but if we use API don't get help item. So this essentially gets all the information of the help item that we use. If you use this, you see it writes here. It writes this. And if you use this, it writes here. It's a custom attribute here while this does not have any custom attribute. So we're going to use the one with the custom attribute. And the reason is because you can actually change an item's custom display name using a name tag. And if I name this item, Poison Sword. You see here, the custom display name here will be Poison Sword. So yeah, that's why um we want to use we want to use a cast a weapon ID to differentiate from people naming their swords the same. All right. So next we're gonna move into a function. So this function called Check Item essentially checks the item that we're using. 
So we're going to use if statements. Uh, if you watch in the last video, we talked about if statements. So we'll use to check if the item is like the item that we want. So we want to check if the item poison sword. If not, nothing's going to trigger. If it's just a regular diamond sword, then we won't let it trigger. So that's what we want. So the function check item will help us do this. Now you may be wondering what a function is. A function is essentially like a recipe. So if we use a function, it will just follow a step. So you see this function here called heal player. So it will apply health change and also send a message. So then we can just use this function without using these two lines of code every time we want to heal a player. If we use this, it will both not only heal the player and send the message. Yeah, so that's just a function. So essentially what this function does is it just checks, it just checks what the item is. So you see these things in the bracket, these are called arguments and we put them into our function. So you see, we use this item, item, item dot name, item name, custom name, custom name, custom ID, custom ID. So we'll go into this later when we actually use the feature. But yes, let's start with our first item. So we're going to start coding this first item. Alright, so we're going to copy and paste the check item feature into our work code here. So, yep. Now what we're gonna do is okay so this code here just sends the amount of damage we're dealing so just like FYI we might need we're gonna need to use that later. Let's move on to adding custom features for this weapon. So the poison sword will of course like poison a player when hit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the poison effect onto the player. So I'm assuming that you have read about all player damaging other player, like your homework that I did for last episode. But if you did not you can go to the description and open up the link to the blocks API document and you can go find it and it explains it pretty well alright so on player damaging other player essentially checks whether like when someone damages another player so player ID is a player who damages a player damage player is a player who got damaged damage dealt is the amount of damage dealt with item is the item that's used yeah that's all very very simple very very simple but honestly Ignore these two, we don't really care about these, these two, we don't really use it a lot. So yeah. So, when the player damages another player, what we want to do is we want to track what the weapon used is, and we can do it using the function I created, which is just check item, and we can check the item whether it's the correct item. That's why I explain what a function does, this checks whether the player has an item in the first place, then checks the item name, then check the item's custom display name, check the item uh, weapon ID, that's all it does. So what we're going to do here is, okay so this code here is essentially to broadcast how much damage we're dealing, but we don't really need it now so I'm just going to take it out. So what we're going to do is first is get the health item, so we'll make a variable called health, and we'll use api.get health item. So what is a variable? A variable essentially is like a box. So this box name health stores api.get health item. And const means like constant. So it means this thing cannot change. We cannot change this variable at all. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use an if statement like we've learned from last week. We're going to use check item. And we're going to check if the health item. So health first. Which is health is just the item here. And then we'll check if the item name, so the item name is a diamond sword. And then our custom name for the item will be poison sword. And finally our custom ID will make it one. And so if this proves true, we can first like send a message. So let's just api.log hit. So let's get the all account on. We are, so our code here says that if our item is Diamond Sword, name Poison Sword with the custom ID of 1, it should trigger the message shape. So let's see. So this is a regular Diamond Sword. The, who, who's holding the item? Okay. So if you use a regular Diamond Sword, it will say nothing. But if we have our Poison Sword, it will say hit. So yeah, our if statement works. So now, um, what we're going to do is, instead of just saying hit, we're going to apply the Poison Effect. We can apply the poison effect using API dot apply effect and we can choose who we want to apply the effect to. So the first argument is the player who's who's doing the who's getting the effect, 
which will be our damage player then what's the name of the effect we will make it poison now it's important to add the E, D and the M because poison is not an effect it's poison that's the name of the effect then the time the duration that you want so let's make it 4 seconds so it's in milliseconds so 4000 milliseconds is 4 seconds and finally we will need to set an inbuilt level if not it will just default to like level 0 which is really buggy sometimes so at our inbuilt level we will be let it make, let's make it poison one. so if hit them with the poison sword now look he gets the poison damage and that's how we can make a simple weapon that poisons other players so all we did it's very simple, we just get the health item, check if the health item is the poison sword, then we just apply the effect, and we're done. And time, if you hit with a regular diamond sword, there's like no effect, if you hit with a poison sword, there is an effect. Now let's move on to the second item. Now what I want you to do as a little exercise, is that I want you to give the player a gold sword with the name of the double damage sword, with the custom weapon ID of 2. Now pause the video here if you need more time. Okay, here's how I would do it. So I would copy what I did from last time. So I'll literally just copy it over. And then I'll just change the item name from Diamond Sword to Gold Sword. I'll set the custom display name to Double Damage Sword. I'll set the weapon ID to 2. And yes, you can call me lazy and whatever. But I did it. So like, you just copy and paste your own code, you don't have to really recode everything here. Now let's make our item do more damage. So we have our code here, this is to just show the damage as I said just now, so we'll just keep it there. And we have our base code here. So we'll just change this to gold sword, to check our item as a gold sword with the name of double damage sword, and you can set the custom ID to 2. Then, instead of applying an effect, instead of doing this, can change it. So you see there's an option here called damage dealt. Well you can actually return damage dealt times two. You can return damage dealt multiplied by two. So return in this case is quite special. So if you return in on player damaging other player, it will do that amount of damage. So if I say oh I want to return 10 so this attack will do 10 damage to him, you see, even though it wrote 37 there, you see, it only dealt 10 damage to him. So if we hit him again, it will do another 10 damage. When we return like a number, even in like full diamond armor, he's still gonna take 10 damage. So I'm gonna put on a gold helmet for him, and let's see if he still takes 10 damage or not. Look, he still takes 10 damage instead of reduced damage. So we can kind of make the item scale in a way by using the damage dealt so this takes a literal damage dealt after countering for like all of like defense and all that stuff and then we can multiply it by 2 so this sign here is multiply not like x like what we learned in school but yes we use this sign instead and for divide we use a slash and for plus minus we still use the same signs but yeah for multiply we use this and so if we use this, um, let's just we can take off his helmet. So we'll do a lot more damage. So now, if you just give him diamond armor, so while we now hit him with a double damage sword, it does eighteen damage. And we can also change it to make it do 1.5 times damage. We can make it do half as much damage by multiplying it by 0 0.5. Or we can make it do like no damage by multiplying it with 0. Or we can literally add like a little number. So we can use damage top plus like 20 to do 20 extra damage per hit. But yeah, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. And finally, we're gonna build an item with knockback. So let's do a small exercise. So I'm just gonna copy and paste in my code here. I'm gonna turn this to an iron sword. I'm gonna call it knockback sword. 
and I'm gonna make it six, seven. All right, yes. So for our code, we are going to delete this because I don't need this anymore. So we're just gonna call this um, an iron sword. Name will be knockback sword. The number will be six, seven. All right, yes. But we are done with our if statements. Yep. So how do we do a sword with knockback? Well, you might be thinking, wait, let's just use a sword with horizontal knockback on it. How about that? Why if we just put horizontal knockback on it? Which is like, yeah, a good, valid idea. We could do that. Or we could just manually make knockback cause I'm weird like that. So before horizontal knockback was in the game, some guy named Softbox, my code by the way, um, he created a knockback for swords. So I'm just gonna copy and paste his code, but I'm gonna try my best to explain it. So constant facing, we're using a variable again, and this gets a player facing direct, direct info, and we're gonna get the, specifically for me, we're gonna get the direction of facing. So plane vector magnitude is essentially using the Pythagoras theorem of the x and z coordinates of like the direction you're facing. Then after that, the knockback will be the direction divided by the, the magnitude and then times 30. So 30 is a strength for x and z. Then we'll use api.apply impulse, which essentially just impulses a player, pushes a player in any direction you want. So if we just hit him with the knockback sword, Oops. So if you just hit this guy, so if you just hit this guy with the knockback sword, he'll be sent flying. That's like, absolutely hilarious. So for the knockback, I just suggest you just copy and paste this whole section into your code. Like that's all. I don't really. I'm not the best to explain it, but yeah, it works. And you see this 30. We can actually nerf the strength by changing to 20, 20. Okay, low key that's like the worst time to lock. Yeah, but yay, he gets knocked back. Yippee! So instead of like changing twenty twenty like this, we can actually make like a new variable called strength. I don't know how to spell it. We can make it like twenty. Then we can change this word here to strength. Okay, I, I know he cannot spell. I'm just gonna copy and paste. And so if we it does not bad of twenty and. We can change the strength to like 40 and then it'll increase. So you might be wondering why is it increasing? Well, remember how I said a variable is a box? So this strength here is a box and it stores the value 40 inside. So if we multiply it by strength strength, it takes the value in the box which is 40. So we're essentially multiplying 40. But we can just change it without like changing all the code. So yes, variables are super 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 duper powerful. If you're wondering why are we not using vertical knockback? Why? It's because um, blocks kind of overrides vertical knockback. Even though I set the y plus 30, it still knocks it up like, horizontally because because um, blocks attacking just ignores all the y all the y velocity that you're getting when you knock up. So thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new today. And if you did, please stay tuned for the next one because the next episode. It's gonna be a lot, a lot, a lot better.